and I will explain to you how we make a couch, uh, sorry, Gouda cheese, and everybody knows Gouda or Gouda. It's a very famous brand, but not everybody knows that you can make it out of cow's milk, the most famous one, but also from goat's milk and sheep milk. The process of making the cheese is quite the same, but the taste is different, and you can try all the different flavors after this demonstration. Well, we have our own cheese farm, 20 minutes from here, and uh, we have our own bread. It's called Henry Willig, and you can see it on every product of ours. And actually, it's this man. He started his company 45 years ago. Uh, now his son is uh, doing his job. Uh, so it's a, a family business. We still make the cheese on the same traditional way and on the same place, only it became bigger and bigger. It was his intention to make the cheese small as this, so everybody can bring it into their home country. And it's specially waxed. And because of that, you are also allowed to bring it into customs and you can leave it outside the fridge for a while. So that's very nice. Um, the process starts with milk, of course. And we put the milk inside this big container, which you can see in a mirror. We heat it up to 29 degrees. <coughs> and that's a very important temperature for this liquid. It's called rennet. And it makes the milk thick like a pudding. Well, because of enzymes inside, the milk starts to get thick. This comes from a stomach of a cow, but um, almost all of our cheeses are vegetarian right now. Uh, it's based on rennet, which comes uh, from a lab, from a laboratory. We call it microbial rennet. And almost all of our cheeses are based on that rennet, only the smoked cheese. And the farmer cheese, this one is not 100% vegetarian, all the other ones are. And you can see it because of this sign, it's called, it's a V of vegetarian. So you can see it on every label of the cheese. Well, in about 40 minutes, the milk is thick like a pudding, and we cut the pudding with th uh, three special rotating blades. By cutting the pudding, it separates into water and cheese, whey and curds. And that is what you can see over here. 90% becomes whey, water, and only 10% becomes curds. That's the cheese, and to make one kilogram of cheese, you need 10 liters of milk. So cheese making is an expensive process. You can also use the whey. Some people drink it, because they say you stay beautiful and young. Um, by drinking this for the rest of your life. <laughs> what we do, we dry it, and then we put it in cosmetics, animal food, but also in Snicker bars, the chocolate bars. Uh, and we have a drink, it's called Rivella. It's a kind of a soft drink. It's also based on the whey. So you can use it for several things. Well, we use the curds, of course. We put the curds in plastic cheese forms like this. And to, to make one cheese like this, one kilogram of cheese, you need 10 liters of milk. So you need 10 liters of milk to make this. After pressing, we put the cheese in a solution of 20% salt and 80% water. And that's important for the salty taste of the cheese and also for the preservation of the cheese. One kilogram stays 24 hours in this bath, then we take the cheeses out. <coughs> and we let it dry for a couple of days. When the cheese is dry enough, we put a plastic cover around it, as you can see over here. And the plastic, first is liquid, it gets hard by itself. And then after a few covers, the cheese is well protected against viruses and bacteria. It's not to eat, it's just protection. It also gives us the opportunity to age the cheese. It's a porous cover, so when you lay it down like this, the moisture gets out, the cheese stays inside, so it gets more concentrated by time. It lasts one month to get um, young cheese. Uh, you will need six months for a middle-aged cheese, we call it belege. And it takes a year or longer to get old cheese. Well, the older it gets, the harder it gets, and the saltier it tastes. I don't have a... Uh, no, I don't have an example of the, the cheese which is very hard. Well, it's like a rock. You can still eat it, very good flavor. It's a bit like Parmesan cheese. 
to stop the aging process, the cheese needs to be closed. And all those small cheeses, they have the wax cover. So you can keep it for at least one month outside the fridge and inside the fridge till the expiry date, which is almost four to six months. Once the cheese is open, you don't have to finish it in one night. It is a possibility, of course, but you can also put it inside the fridge in a box like this, and then uh, you can leave it for six weeks. No problem at all. We have different flavors, as I told you, uh, we have uh, lots of flavor, 35 different. Uh, this is just an example, and every color represents another flavor. For example, the natural one, herbs and garlic, pepper, fenugreek tastes a bit like nuts, and this one looks very green, it's pesto cheese, with basil inside, it's a very nice flavor. Um, we also have a cheese which looks like a sausage and tastes like a sausage. This is the smoked cheese. You can also eat the skin. That's the best part of the cheese. And what we like to eat in Holland is cheese together with mustard. This is the traditional one. We, have, uh, we also have honey, um, honey mustard, cranberry mustard, pepper dew mustard. You add it on cheese, it's a very good combination. Um, to cut the cheese, we don't use a regular knife, we use a cheese slicer and a cheese grater. And with the cheese slicer you can make some beautiful slices, just like this. Then you can put it on a sandwich or eat it right away. There you go. You can try it inside. It's the same as the red cheeses, the baby gouda. When you want some cheese on pasta or pizza, we use a cheese grater. It's a very handy tool. When you want some cheese, just like this. There you go. There you go. Okay, well, it's time to try the cheese inside. If you don't like cheese at all, we also have a typical Dutch cookie. It's called a syrup waffle to try and lots of chocolate. So enjoy your stay and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.